30 minute lunch lift. Come on. There we go, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. All right, guys, we're going downtown. I had to divert from the mountain run today. I'll explain downtown. All right, let's go, come on. It's coming, it's coming, YouTube. Be patient, it's coming, oh baby. Okay, we made it downtown and it's cold out. Uh, filming outside is about to get a lot harder for you guys as the winter months arrive. And so, why am I not filming up in the mountains right now? Well, let me read a comment from yesterday from Damien. Remember when we were talking about va the value proposition with running shoes? Well, I picked up my first pair of Skechers ever yesterday. I'm hoping these deliver a lot of great value. I'm not gonna be running in these today, Rather, I'm gonna be running, of course, in the Clifton Fives and the Beacons. But here's a comment from Damien, and it just, uh, it made me laugh, and I love it. So here, Damien's from Wisconsin, and he said this. There's lower end Nikes at department stores, Kohl's locally in Wisconsin, 40 to $60, but hard to beat $20 Hoka's in reference to my Hoka's, which I'm wearing right now, and I lifted in today. I bought them for $20 off of Craigslist. Fila's, usually lowest price out there, $30 for running shoes, no bells or whistles, but comes with free humility. Damien, I love it. And yes, a little bit of free humility perhaps in the Skechers, I don't know. Another area of my life where I, uh, where I have some humility is this car. And this car is a 2002 Toyota Corolla, and essentially it will not make it in the mountains when it's snowing. So I was planning to go to the mountains today to film for you guys, but I probably would not have made it back. Uh, I would have gotten stuck up there for sure. So I decided to change plans. I'm gonna film in Denver today in the city. So I had to divert my plans from mountain filming to urban filming, where yes, we're gonna compare the New Balance Beacons to the Hoka Clifton Fives. Let's do this. All right, starting off in the Hoka Clifton Fives, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wear my vest, my raid light vest, on the run, carrying my beacons, and then halfway through the run, exactly halfway, I'm gonna switch over to the beacons, and I want to make the transition very as quickly as possible because I just want to have that muscle memory in my feet, in my legs, and just to remember like, okay, how did the Hoka Clifton Fives feel? And then boom, right into the beacons, just to give you that really precise comparison. And again, I realize the category of shoes is just slightly different, but a lot of you are asking to compare the two, and so that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to listen to you guys. So it's gonna be interesting to carry these, and then I don't know if I've ever done this before. I don't think I have, where I'm carrying a shoe on a run, switching halfway, and then just boom, muscle memory, trying to remember exactly how they feel. All right, let's go.
and we're back. All right, gonna talk about these shoes in one minute, but True Love and I, we're actually off tonight on a Friday night. We're going out on the town crazy to a swanky cocktail party. I gotta go get ready. I'll be right back, be right back. We runners can clean up a little bit. We can clean up a little bit. You know, we sometimes prefer dry fit clothing and spandex and, you know, polyester. But hey, listen, we can clean up every now and then, every now and then. All right, guys, let's start with a beacon. Some specs on this guy right now. The beacon is incredibly lightweight. 7.7 .7 ounces. 7.7. .7. That's amazing. The Beacon has a 9mm drop from heel to toe, 9mm from heel to toe. It's definitely a soft landing, you know, and I think that is why a lot of people are comparing this Beacon to the Clifton 5, is that it's got a lot of that fresh foam through the midsole. The flexibility on the Beacon, pretty incredible. Like, I think it's a flex, personally, I think it's a flexible shoe compared to many others. Like. I could bend this in half if I wanted to, like right there, right there. And the Hoka Clifton 5, 10 ounces. So about three ounces more than the Beacon, 10 ounces for the Hoka Clifton 5. The Hoka Clifton 5, I didn't even actually realize this, has an 11 millimeter drop from heel to toe. Heel to toe, 11 mil, that's pretty high on the scale of running shoes. How about the cushion? How about the cushion in the Hoka Clifton 5? I think this EVA foam through the midsole, yeah, I mean, it's got some cushion for sure. That's what Hoka is known for, is having good cushion through the midsole. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that more in a second. And then the flexibility. I would put it more in the category, and I don't want to stretch it too much, but more in the category of moderate to stiff or moderate to uh, rigid, if I can use that term. So see, I'm, it's not definitely not quite as easy to flex compared to the Beacon. Now, as concise as possible, I'm gonna try and compare these two shoes. Who wins the game when it comes to the upper? I'm gonna give the Hoka Clifton 5 the win for the upper. This upper in the Hoka Clifton 5, it's a new, they're calling it like an engineered mesh it's very comfortable. I would put it on par with the Turbo, the Nike Pegasus 35 Turbo. It's got a really comfortable upper. Whereas the Beacon is more of a knit upper, which is also comfortable, but this this feels like it has a little more um, compression around the top of your foot in a good way. So it's, it's more hugging your foot, whereas the knit upper in the Beacon, it allows your, your toes and the top of your foot to splay a little bit, meaning spread out. Um, and I actually prefer a little more of a snug fit through my upper on any running shoe. And so anyway, the upper goes to the Hoka Clifton 5. And through the midsole, who wins the midsole game? I'm going with the Beacon. It's a little more comfortable, a little more cushion, a little more, um, yeah, you sink into the shoe a little more in the Beacon, which maybe you don't want that. But if you want a little more uh, forgiveness when you step down into the shoe, you know, just to help you, in my opinion, recover on easy days. I'm going with a beacon over the Hoka Clifton 5. It felt, I'll be frank, like it felt a little stiff through the Hoka Clifton 5. And All right, the important part of the video right now. When should you use each shoe? And guess what? Yes, it's different times. It's different. It became very clear today in the streets of Denver, uh, I, you know, I did five miles in this guy first, five miles in this guy second, and then I doubled up with another mile in each one just to make sure I understood the feel of each one. The Hoka Clifton 5, in my opinion, is going to be perfect for the eight to, yeah, eight to 20 mile middle to long distance runs. Uh, I don't think it's a, an easy day shoe. When I was running in this shoe at nine minute pace, it just didn't feel good. It felt clunky. It felt like I, I, I had to use that meta rocker that Hoka is known for. So I had to try and land on my heel and I am more of a land on my forefoot type of runner. So I felt like I had to change my stride at, at slower speeds in the Hoka Clifton 5 just to get the benefit of that meta rocker design in basically all of Hoka shoes. So eight, eight to 20 mile middle to long distance runs in the Hoka Clifton 5, whereas the Beacon, the New Balance Beacon is gonna be, and I'm sticking to my guns on this, I'm sticking to my guns on this, 
three to eight mile easy days. Although I will say this, I switched from this guy after five miles to this guy. As soon as I put this shoe on, which is three ounces lighter than the Clifton 5, I immediately was like, oh my gosh, I want to run fast. Let's do this. Let's do a time trial. Let's do a workout. Let's do a race. Like I felt like this shoe was poised for running fast immediately as soon as I put it on. And actually, if you look on Strava, let's connect below. I, I think my splits got a little faster in this shoe as soon as I put it on. However, by mile nine or 10 for the day in this guy, I was starting to feel tired. And that's why I mentioned a couple days ago that I don't think the beacon is made for a, a half marathon or marathon distance race. I think you're gonna be losing too much energy because it's too flexible. Does that make sense? Another big question, would I buy these shoes again? Absolutely, 100%. Can't wait for the Beacon version two, which is, I've seen photos of it. It looks actually quite a bit different, but I'm excited for it. It's being released, I believe, early 2019, maybe spring 2019. Would I buy the Clifton 5 again? Mm, the verdict is still out. The verdict is still out. I will say though, today, after running in both shoes, my plantar fasciitis feels amazing. It feels amazing. Now I'm doing a lot of upkeep and maintenance on my PF right now, but I'm telling you, uh, Jessica at Roadrunner Sports led me to this shoe and like walking around my house right now, like, it feels amazing. Good news, good news, YouTube. And the question of the day. What, I don't, we've talked quite a bit about recovery shoes on this channel. I'm curious to hear, what is your go-to middle to long distance running shoe and why? Middle, so for me, I would put the, you know, definitely 10 miles plus type of shoe or even 12 miles plus, you know, depending where you're at in your training schedule and your training regimen and how old you are and like just the, but like I love going out for 20 miles. And so like that's, that's my mentality and just getting a good long run in. So not a tempo run, but just a good long run or middle distance run. What is your go-to shoe for that? I'd appreciate learning. And definitely like if you have the time, explain why. I think a lot of people would appreciate hearing your insight into why you chose that shoe for middle to long distance runs. We could talk all night. We could talk all night, but I got to go to a swanky cocktail party and I got to get some sleep tonight at some point, at some point. When will that happen? I do not know. But tomorrow, oh, we're, we're going to we're gonna talk about yeah, the Nike Vomero 14s. We're going to talk about, we got to talk about the Nike Vomero 14s. Remember, they were stolen mm, four or five days. They were stolen. Somebody took my Nike Vomero 14s. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Thanks for being here, YouTube. Thank you for being here. Mm. Boom. See you tomorrow.